What do you call the bugs that are on this island? Why won't the bugs on this island leave the area? And am I just into this to make ant puns? All this and more on Gory Storytime. Warning. Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Welcome to Gory Storytime. I'm your host, Jason. I'm his father and co-host, Craig. And just to quickly answer those questions, <clears throat> go back and line these answers up with those questions. Jai ants, they're defy ant, and no, I would ant do that. So that's been this episode of Gory Storytime. <laughs> no. All right. So in case you couldn't get that from my... Delicious puns. <laughs> uh, we are reviewing the classic 1977 film. H.G. Wells. H.G. Wells of presents. The Ants. Yes. He, well, he doesn't present. No. And it's he, it's not even well represented. Um, so there was a short story by H.G. Wells. This isn't that. We'll get into that later. But what the story to this is is there's a sleazy person and her husband that's trying to sell land, land on this island. Unbeknownst to them, but beknownst to us because we saw it happen, there's ants that have been infected by toxic waste. And because they some are, people were just throwing toxic waste into the water. And it, one opened up on this island, and yeah, it opened a can of whoop ant. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Um, that one doesn't really work. <laughs> but you laughed. Anyway, um, so the ants become gigantic and start attacking people that hurt. were basically on one of those, you know, where they're like, ah, you can take a cruise, but you have to hear us pitch a timeshare, that kind of thing. That's basically what they were doing. They're like, we're going to pitch you to buy this property, and we'll supply you with alcohol and a free ride to this nice island food and, and food and you know in return you hear our pitch and you don't have to buy anything and then it's like super high pressure yeah. I, i've been through them because they gave me free tickets to universal studios oh yeah it wasn't worth it because yeah, they're like was. before you leave are you sure you don't i'm like dog i don't make enough but anyway let's not get into that that's my least favorite part is there was a timeshare involved no <laughs> <laughs> So of all the things. Then they have to escape and go to town and get help to escape the ants, the giant ants. And without spoiling anything, that's basically the premise. Is that there's giant ants attacking and they have to get away. Yeah. yeah. And um, it sure was a movie. Yeah. But why don't we show you the trailer so you can see the amazing special effects. history's prophets, none has a greater degree of credibility than H.G. Wells, with his predictions of moon landings, ray guns, sonic signaling devices. Is Wells right again in his prediction of dangers to come in Empire of the Ants? In this fantastic tale, Wells tells the chilling story of a colony of ants who feed on atomic waste, causing them to grow into large, voracious monsters. Let's get out of here, come on! And these giant ants are actually able to control humans. He needs us. That's why it has to be this way. Why we must obey. 
At first, the people don't understand. They must be forced into submission. After their indoctrination, they realize that the ants only want us to take care of them and work for them, feed them. That's the way it should be. They are superior. <laughs> They don't want us to go that way, and they don't want us to go back the way we came. My God, they're hurting us like cattle! G. Wells, Empire of the Ants. For they shall inherit the earth sooner than you think. I have an idea for a trailer. Let's give away the twist ending in the middle of our trailer. At the beginning of the trailer. It was recoculous is what it was. But anyway, before we get into the behind the scenes information, we have to explain why we're actually here. See, people keep telling me that they believe that we do this show because we like horror movies. We do, but why do we do this show, Jay? We are, what is it, money-hungry whores? Yeah, basically, we do a show so we have a premise to get money to promote people's products. We just needed something to put the ads to. We, we're we just selling ourselves out so that we can get piles and piles and piles of greenbacks just delivered to our house on flatbed trucks. Y yes. Like, my plan is eventually, with the, with the earnings from this show, swimming around in a pool of change like Scrooge McDuck. But anyway, the way we do that this week is by promoting these actual things that exist. <clears throat> Gory Story Time is brought to you by Toxic Waste, the only waste that has proven to have major effects on land, sea, sky, and any creatures that lives in them. What can Toxic Waste do for you? Try it and see. Everyone's experience is different. It makes ants gigantic. It may imbue you with superpowers. It may even cause reptiles to learn ancient fighting skills. Ask your doctor if Toxic Waste is right for you. Warning, statistically, Toxic Waste is most likely to kill you slowly with cancer. Use at your own risk. All right. And by Master Bait brand Bug Bait. Why call a professional and pay way too much when you could do the job yourself with Master Bait? Master Bait is so easy to use that you can do it one-handed. Our bait doesn't kill the bugs. It lures the bugs away from your home and confuses them so they can't remember where they <laughs> lived. That's... <laughs> That's why our slogan is, if you have bugs, become a masturbator. Right. Masturbate works on all bugs, but especially well on cockroaches. Mm -hmm. All right. Now that we've made our pile of money, we can get into the meat and beef, as you like to say. That's his slang term for behind the scenes information because he meant meat and potatoes. But potatoes but he, aren't on my diet. He happens to be an idiot and, well... All right, I'll go first, I guess. All right. uh, writer, producer, and director Bert L. I. I. Gordon, yes. Bert I. Gordon created some of the special effects of large ants by shooting magnified images of Panamanium. Of pan, yeah, bullet ants. That's the one. Yeah. As a promotional gimmick for this film, theaters displayed ant farms in the lobbies, though they were not allowed anywhere near the concession stands. Really? Uh, Joan Collins disliked working with the ant props, claiming they bumped into the sh and scratched the actors, including her. This was the third Burt I. Gordon film to claim it was based on the work of H.G. Wells. In actuality, all three films had little or nothing to do with source material. This was also the eighth Gordon film to deal with the subject of giant monsters. 
The name of the rental car agency owner is painted on the window as J. Foote. James E. Foote worked on this movie as transportation captain. According to Joan Collins, a delay in the arrival of their stunt doubles forced the actors to do the canoe capsizing themselves. She was upset that they were putting stunt people out of work, but pressure from Bert I. Gordon suggesting that she was difficult and uncooperative forced her to go along with it. She feared being called a prima donna bitch and thus losing future work opportunities. All right. Uh, according to Pamela Susan Shoup, the sound man had a fight with the director towards the end of the, the shoot and threw all the studio tapes into a swamp. They lost everything, so the entire film had to be looped. Because of this, their voices and actions never quite match up. I noticed that a little. Well, it was all done that way. All right, then. Because the guy recording the audio was a jerk. Um, or he thought that the director was. Either way, it... Joan Collins was paid a salary of $45,000 for this film. This film was not shown in the UK until 1979 when it played on general release as the bottom half of a double feature with The Brinks Job. Before the captain jumps into the ocean to try to save his boat, he takes off his shoes. After he burns the boat, he jumps into the water and you can clearly see he's wearing his shoes. Oh. Um, all right. Near the end of the film during the ant attack in the sugar refinery, Joan Collins' character is seen outside with the others fleeing, and then she is suddenly back in the refinery being attacked by one of the large ants. Following the storm in which all the characters were seen getting soaked outside in the rain, they continue their escape from the large ants completely dry. Oh, dry off too. While the large ants are entering the sugar refinery, several of them are walking on the sky, indicating a glass surface, possibly an ant farm. The original UK cinema version was heavily cut to receive a PG certificate, or an A for them, but PG to us, to reduce the sounds of the screaming and heavily edit the violence in the attack scenes and shots of bloody bodies. The cuts were restored for the 2002 ILC release, and the certificate was upgraded to a 15. Hmm. Huh. Uh, in the Simpsons episode titled Deep Space Homer, the phrase spoken by Kent Brockman, I, for one, welcome our new insect overlords, is a reference to this movie. Um, an homage to the Jaws theme can be heard in several scenes, and we noticed that. Yep. Uh, when all the characters are attempting to escape in the red Ch Chevrolet and are being shot at by police, the car mounts are seen an, an unseen ramp and dives into the nearby water. As it enters in slow motion, only the driver is shown in the car. Moments later, three people are shown exiting the car and two more are climbing up the riverbank. After the survivors emerge from the swamp, they are altern there are alternating scenes in which <clears throat> Joan Collins' character's skirt that was white was completely clean, then dirty then completely clean, then dirty. All right. Yeah. Um, all right, so. That was a stretch to get all the information considering there was, what, eight things, I think, yeah. on IMDb, and I, I keep looking because we can stretch, but like, if I can get close to 20, we try to do 10 each. Yep. Um, but anyway. Anything else you want to say before we rate it and stuff and talk about our favorite and least favorite scenes? I mean, usually I'd say something like, oh, go watch this movie or, uh, but yeah. You don't feel like saying that? Yeah, I don't feel like saying that. Okay, I get it. So, nothing. All right. Well, what was your favorite thing about this movie you don't care for? Right. Um, I mean, probably the fact that they had, like, miniatures that the ants were climbing on to try to to try to make ants. it look like real ants were climbing on these things. Mm -hmm. Um mine I would have to say is I did like that they gave each character their own backstory. They wanted you to like feel something for each character. There was a one that was divorced, there was yeah. one that was looking for a new job, there was you know and like that was actually creative of them because right. it was completely Unrelated, unrelated to, to the, the story, story that right. they were doing. Absolutely. So that would be my favorite part. What was your least favorite part? Uh, well, so 
near the beginning, some people are throwing some like toxic waste into the ocean, mm-hmm. and then that like sets the whole movie in motion. Mm-hmm. So that. <sighs> Alrighty, uh, me personally, I'm gonna say my least favorite part is probably that they weren't clear about how long from the incident with the toxic waste and the beginning of this film. Because if you just watch it at face value, it looks like it happened and then immediately people showed up and they were already gigantic, which doesn't actually make sense. Like even if it was to make them grow, even if they grew fast, it would take days. You are looking for this to make sense? Well, my point- That's problematic. Well, my point is like they should have said, you know, a month later or, you know, a year later or whatever later. Because, like, us dumb people need everything spelled out for us. No, it's just that, you know, when you cut from it here's just that happened happening to, to obvious up the street on that same beach, here's people working. And it's like, mm. Right. It just doesn't make sense that way for a movie with this premise to, for something yeah. to stick out as making less sense is a problem. Definitely. Um, oh, we forgot oh, to do yes. the, uh, the people tomatoes. and the critics. Of so, the, yes. Again, I say this every week, but just so you know, Rotten Tomatoes does not score the movies themselves. They take the professional reviewers and they take all the positive reviews and all the negative reviews and they average it. Like they, It's like whatever percentage gives it a positive review. So whatever number it is, that's the percentage of reviewers that had something good. Like basically it's anything like a C plus or higher or a C or higher, something like that. So passing. Um, So you could technically have a hundred percent movie if everybody gave it a C. Yeah. Which is weak. Because everybody said it was good. Um, And they also let the people uh, vote and the critics have it at a whopping. Six percent. Which is way lower than the people who give it a rousing 25. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you rate this classic piece of film? Film? All right. Um, well, for what it is and the time being and the special effects that they had what access they tried to, to do. And I mean, this was the same year as Star Wars. So all right, you, but you Star Wars had some crappy special more effects compared money. to now. Oh no, no, no! Not originally. No, you'd be surprised. Well, either way, look into that. Um, it's less. It, I mean, that movie was good, though. And well, well so I think I'm going to give this movie a a two and a half. Wow. I'm going to give it a five because I found it fun. It is fun. I think it's worth a watch. Um, It's worth a watch, especially if you imbibe in cannabinoids. Um, No, it's true. Right, well, that was the problem, okay? Like, none of the movies that we're doing in this series of four are meant to be great, except for The Birds, Uh, which we did last week. We should have done that one last. No, I wanted to at least start off with some, because otherwise it would be like, uh, Right, but then we have nothing to look forward to. Not necessarily. That's you, how it feels. You liked Piranha. And I was looking forward to this, and then we watched it. I can't set myself up for such pain. Anyway, coming next week, we're not sure which one, but probably something like Frogs, I... which exists. It's free on YouTube. Not that I would suggest watching movies illegally on a platform like YouTube. That is wrong, and you should. Not that I would make recommend sure. watching a movie about frogs like that. First of I all, I can't sh- fully know yet. We are yet. French, and how dare you? Wow. Rip it, rip it. All right. Anyway, um, is there anything else you want to say about this before we? Because uh, we seem to have blown through it a little quick today. Yeah. Um. How about? Unlike usual, don't watch this i disagree like if you like i'm doing this in the memory of my brother and he the more it wasn't good film the more he enjoyed it which you know what all love to him 
for being able to put up with things like, uh, what was it? Piranha Doctor, 2 with the Dr. Flying. Pepper. All right. What? <laughs> the salt and vinegar chips, Empire of the Ants. These things go on the same list for me. All right. Well, anyway. <laughs> no, I have to say, like, I, I enjoyed it for what it is. It's just, if you sit down and watch a movie about ants in toxic waste becoming gigantic and you're, like, looking for good film, you're an idiot. I mean... No, no. You're an idiot. Uh, am I? Yes. Dude, as someone who enjoys killer clowns from outer space and, you know... Uh, but that's, like, great cinema. And evil bong. Okay, uh, except, like... This is that type of fun for a okay. lot of people. Except this is more deathbed, the bed that eats. No, it wasn't that bad. Oh, my oh, word. I mean, no, I don't, don't know. I don't think I had dare. more fun with that, didn't I? No. You had no fun with that. You All right, well, don't that watch movie. that either. Well, definitely don't watch that. Okay. Now, there's only two films available, and you have to choose one. This or Maniac. See? It's not that as bad as your difficult choice. No, it's not that as bad as you think. Difficult no. choice. Watch our our 200th episode special to really Does see it get the to be best. The, uh, We're not even the directors. Remake? We we put in a special director's cut, but not the director. Uh, no, because we brought in watch his cut, and you'll understand why we didn't go with his. Yeah, we we brought in Alex Stradling to do edits to make it better. Yeah, so we're padding the runtime of episode 230-whatever to tell you, go back 30-something episodes and, and watch, watch our 200th special. Watch both specials. They're actually good. They're both They're, up there. I mean, those are but probably our best episodes. All right, now let's see. Well, we put a lot more work into them. Even you actually did stuff. Um, Heck, yeah, I did. <clears throat> I got killed by Jesus. That is true. That is true. You did do that. So... Watch that. Good Friday the 13th. Great movie. Can't wait to make it. We've, we've made the trailer. So, uh, now make the film. On the side of the screen, there's all sorts of things for me to tell you. Yeah. Uh, see? Look at that. Fact TV channel 1076, Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. are where you could watch this show. Another place you could watch this show is when they live stream it on Facebook. So you just go ahead and like Gory Story Time and Fact TV because Fact TV live streams a lot of stuff. Actually. And another place you could watch this show is Factate.com. Oh my goodness. That's true. Are all these things places you can watch this show? No, because then there's the Twitter handles of at Craig Jakes, all one word, all lowercase, and, and at Jiggly Firm Brain. I just tweet things that he says. Usually. With just the amount of context to make it funnier. And if the answer is zero, then that's the amount he gives. All right. Indeed, indeed. That about it for that. Oh, uh, please like uh, Gory, you know, go, look up Gory Story Time on YouTube, and you'll see two different channels. Fact TV's channel, give them a follow and a subscribe, whatever, you know. Yep, yep. Um, and same with Juggalo Jakes, that's mine, but just, you know. Click on it. It's got music videos. It's got sketches. It's got another show that's political. It's Sometimes. There's a lot of stuff. Yes. There's a lot of stuff. There is indeed. Um, and that's about yeah, it. Don't right? watch this. And until next time. Watch this. I've been your host. Don't watch this. Jason. I'm his co-host and father that says you should watch this, Craig. And don't watch this, Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams. <laughs>